So, welcome everyone to my little talk about the GeoFabric download server. I am Frederick. I'm one of the people running GeoFabric. Um, fabric is actually a German word for factory. So it's not, not related to fabric in the, in, the, in the English sense in any way. So, um, GeoFabric runs this download server, um, which many of you might be familiar with. I'll just uh, say quickly what it does. It's a server that's it's completely independent of the, of the main OpenStreetMap database. It downloads the planet file from the OpenStreetMap database. It processes updates every day and cuts the updated planet file into small chunks so that anyone can download them easily. It also creates shape files for those who can't process OpenStreetMap data. And uh, one thing that I have recently added is um, it's also the production of diff updates, regional diff updates. So if you're only interested in a small part of the world, you can now download that once and then every day download a small update file to update your local database. It's uh, not something that people would often use, but I had some people who are in developing countries or for, others, for other reasons, um, behind very, very low bandwidth connections. And for them, it's really good if they only need to download an update. This is how it looks like. If you go to download.geofabric.de, you get uh, a small map and uh, a selection of continents at first um, with a couple of ready-made download links. Um, but you can then also drill down deeper and say, okay, I'm interested in North America. And then you can see, okay, North America has a number of sub-regions. For the US, we have, we have the different census regions because downloading all of the US is quite big. So you can download only Midwest or something like that. And you can also drill down further and download individual states. Um, the, the download server holds data for all continents. So there's one file for North America, one for South America, one for Central America, and so on. Um, it has data for most countries, not all countries, for example, in Africa or Asia, we're we are missing a few smaller countries. I, I often add them on request if someone comes and says, could you add uh, an extract for so-and-so, then I do it. Um, and for some countries, we even have some sub-country extracts. Um, for example, for the US, we have the, the states, or for Canada, uh, we have the provinces and territories. For Germany, we have the lender and even smaller smaller extracts for France, the um, uh, regions also, and for the UK, a number of counties. So I already said, why are we doing this? Why, why the download server? a Planet OSM excerpt for Germany. At that time I had written a script that would allow me to cut out the Germany polygon out of the Planet file and uh, at the time uh, I wrote this is a 14 megabyte file at the moment. Um, today the Germany file has 2.5 gigabytes but the <laughs> technology is basically not, not changed very much. Um, and of course, uh, lots of other countries have been added in the meantime. But that in 2007, that was basically the start of the idea of serving smaller files to make it easier to work with. 
A couple of numbers, the, the download server has about, creates about 50 terabytes of traffic every month. Uh, luckily, I only have to pay for 20 of them because five of them are basically made by... The, uh, Hetzner is a big German uh, hosting provider and our servers are with Hetzner and five terabytes a month are um, from other people having also using Hetzner servers and that's not billable if, you, if, if it's traffic from another Hetzner server, so that doesn't cost us anything. And then uh, another 25 terabytes are handled by an FTP mirror that um, the GWDG, it's a German um, university um, operator, uh, um, is uh, providing. So we basically we offer an R-Sync um, R feed to them and they copy some of our files and people then can download them directly from there. Um, big thank you to GWDG for that. You can see they're, they're handling um, half of the traffic uh, of the Geofabric download server and they, they don't uh, charge anything for this. They just do it for people to use. <coughs> we have about 2,000 visitors each day who download something. Um, we offer uh, OpenStreetMap data in the PBF and BZIP2 formats. Meantime, the better PBF format is preferred by users in a ratio of about 3 to 1. Um, and the 5% most popular files account for 90% of the traffic. The most popular files are certainly the Europe files, the Germany files and stuff because that's where, where things, where the download server has started and, and still used very frequently. Um, in the beginning I computed all the stuff at the server, on the server at the Geofabric office. Um, later I still did that but created the bzip2 files on the on the server on the internet meanwhile everything is done on a on a special server because the office line was just maxed out with transferring all the extracts all the time now a quick overview about how this works we have a planet file that we start with um, the standard openstreetmap pbf planet file the only non-standard thing is that we create this in an uncompressed uh, PBF, you can you can choose whether you want to compress the individual block blocks or not. This is uncompressed because it processes a bit faster. Then every night we use Osmosis to download the latest diffs from OpenStreetMap, which gives us a new updated planet file. At the same time, we split the planet uh, out into one eastern half and one western half. This is all done in one Osmosis step. Then we use another program, it's called OSM History Splitter, wit written by Peter Kerner. The OSM History Splitter, because it is about twice as fast as osmosis, you can, you can do the same thing with osmosis, it just uses more resources. And then again we use the history splitter uh, in a multi-process um, stage to create the individual country, country files from the continents. And, and for those countries where we have sub-country steps, there are still... much more resources if you split too many, ex uh, too many parts out at the same time. Depending on the setup, if you wanted to do something similar, depending on what exactly you're splitting out, you can do more or less in one go. Um, it, it really depends and you have to try it out a bit. Um, all this is controlled by one big ugly Perl script. Um, it's, um, it's not really available publicly, it's not on GitHub or something because it really wouldn't do much wouldn't be much use for you because it has lots of hard-coded paths inside and stuff. But if anyone is interested in any part, nothing of this is closed source. Uh, any of this is available. My config files and Perl scripts and all the stuff, um, you can email me and, and or I, I could put that, put that up somewhere. I, I don't have it uh, on the download server for download because that would inevitably, inevitably be inevitably 
uh, cause many people to download it and then start asking questions, which uh, would take me a lot of time to answer. But if anyone in is interested in looking at the stuff, um, you can have it. You might have noticed if you have been doing anything with OpenStreetMap extracts, either with a history splitter or with osmosis, they all require polygon files. It's a file that's called so-and-so.poly, and it contains just a number of coordinates that form the outline of whatever you want to cut out. Now, those have a very interesting history. Um, it's, it's an uncommon format. I mean, many, many geodata stuff is in shapefiles or in OSM files. Or these poly files are an entirely different data format. And the only reason we are using those poly files is basically it's my fault or it's, not, it's, it's the fault of the people at who at that time in 2007 operated the website maproom.psu.edu. Because when I set up the initial stuff that cut out polygons from OpenStreetMap, um, we didn't have count country boundaries in OpenStreetMap at all. So I was looking for some source on the internet where I can download country boundaries. And I found that server where you can say, okay, I want to have a boundary of Turkmenistan, and then it would accept your request and take a while to process, and then it would give you a poly file, a file that, that had the outline of, um, of the country that you requested. And the first scripts to cut out polygons from OpenStreetMap data were written by me and were using this polygon file because I thought, well, that's easiest for everyone. If anyone wants a custom extract, they can download their, their country boundary from this server. And then later on, when, when um, Brad Henderson did Osmosis, he uh, installed, he supported the same polygon format. And even the Planet History Splitter now supports this polygon format. And it's all, the, I th the original website where you could get them from doesn't even exist. Uh, nowadays, if people want to create a polygon file, uh, they actually load the relation from OpenStreetMap for the country, for the country boundary. And then there are a number of um, scripts that allow you to convert from OSM file to polygon file and back, uh, or from shapefile to polygon. So this is completely an a completely arbitrary, um, uh, historically th historical thing, these polygon files, but it's hard to get rid of them. The download server has a lot of shortcomings as well. Um, one of them is the cascading production, is what I just explained. We first we cut out the, the, the continents, and then from the continent files we cut out the countries, and so on. And now there are some, uh, some ab abnormalities, like for example, uh, you have the Canary Islands who are actually part of the African continent, but people would expect them to be in the Spain file because they belong to Spain. Well, there's a number of, um, there's a number of, uh, of islands that are in Central America, that but politically belong to a country in South America. So um, people would expect that if, uh, if they download the country, country extract that those islands are in there, but because the country is cut out from the South America file, and the islands are in the Central America file, that doesn't, doesn't really work and I have to split them up. So that's some, a problem that sometimes happens. Another thing uh, that's becoming more and more problematic is that the history splitter doesn't currently support completing relations. That means, for example, if you, make a cut, uh, if you cut out Germany and you have uh, Lake Constance, which is a very large lake on the boundary of Germany and Austria, and uh, Germany, Austria and Switzerland, um, and that's in OSM, that's a big uh, multi-polygon relation. And if you have... Um, it's a bit sad for me to, to actually configure the download server to produce that extract because it's from then on it will be complete com computed every day or every night and, uh, and consume some load on the server just because someone wanted to download something once. So that's something where the server is not that fit for. Um, also, um, there is no way to download individual layers. so. For example, France, the, the data for France consists, I think, something like 
75% of the France data set is buildings. And uh, do you have another number? More than 75% uh, of France is buildings. Now, someone who wants to download France and is not interested in buildings would actually like to maybe download only the roads or something. Um, and that's something that we can't offer at the moment. Maybe there's, maybe there's something that we can do down the road. Also, if you want to download data for rendering, uh, and then you also need the coastline shape files and stuff, uh, which are not part of, uh, of these download files. I think Mike Migurski did something when he when he ran the he had an extract server that did only um, only city regions, uh, large city regions, and and he used to cut out bits of the coastline shape file for consumers of that data as well. Maybe that's something that we have to think about for the future. If you want to set up something like the GeoFabric download server yourself, maybe for your own uh, country or for a special project or something, um, ask yourself. Do you need lossless extracts? Because the extracts that we produce are, uh, they contain all the data, including who has last modified an object, when was it last modified, and so on. Um, Osmosis has the option of dropping that data, making the extracts even smaller. Um, so this is something that, that I don't do on the download server, but something that you could do. Um, if you want to run something like this, but you're not using the whole planet, you say you only want to you only want to update a, a small number of country extracts, then it is also possible to do away with this whole complex structure and instead apply OpenStreetMap updates to your little extracts and afterwards cut out the area again. So, for example, you have a file w that has only Spain in it, then you can run, you can apply the worldwide updates as they come from the OSM server, which will then give you a slightly larger file because it has all the updates for Spain plus anything that has been created anywhere in the world. But then after the afterwards, you just cut out the, the Spain polygon again, and voila, you have an updated Spain file without having to go through the effort of updating the whole planet. So this is something that is very runs very well if you want to update a small number of country files or something. Um, as I said before, uh, you can have all the code that I have written for this server, um, but it's not very polished and it may, may require some Perl knowledge to understand. Um, there are alternatives to the GeoFabric download server. Many people do cool things in that area. Uh, one very good thing is uh, a server called extract.bbbike.org. It's, it, it's short for Berlin Brandenburg Bike. It's a, um, a German project originally. Um, on that server, you can actually select a random area. You can select a random area, a uh, rectangular area, or even a polygon, and have that extracted for you. Um, the size limits are very generous. Uh, the disadvantage is that the data may be up to a week old, and it's not daily updated. But other than that, it's quite cool. If you want to download smaller regions, you can do that from the Overpass ap API. Um, and there are a number of different uh, servers who do similar things like the GeoFabric download server for different regions. For example, one that has all the Russian regions or something um, listed on the wiki page on the OpenStreetMap wiki. So that was it about the GeoFabric download server. And um, thank you for listening. Does anyone have any questions about it? Yeah. The OSM, the question was whether the OSM history splitter can do many extracts at once. Yes, it can. Um, it has a config file um, where you can specify, I want the following things cut out along polygonal or bounding box, um, and, and this, these are the names of the resulting files. And then it reads the source file and, and creates all of them at the same time. There is a certain limit. Um, the OSM history splitter has two, uh, two operating modes. Um, one will um, harshly cut off everything at the border, and the other will try to at least make give you uh, complete ways, so adding the extra nodes for ways that reach outside the, bo the boundary. The, the second one is a little bit more expensive in terms of CPU and, and runtime and memory. 
and there's a limit. Um, I, I, I can't say it off the top of my head, but if you do something like more than 10 extracts at the same time, it will consume a lot of memory, so you have to be on the lookout for that. On the download server, we sometimes run uh, multiple instances of it in parallel um, using different source files and producing different out. Uh, so that's quite possible, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, the question was whether we could link to specific export, uh, uh, specific extracts from the export tab on the on the uh, download server uh, on on the uh, OpenStreetMap main server. Um, I think that would be quite uh, possible. However, um, I'm I'm not sure. I mean, what what you would have to do is look at the region that someone want is asking to export, judge whether it maybe is too big uh, to offer uh, a d data down download, and then point them to the relevant extract on the GeoFabric download server. The polygon boundaries used by the GeoFabric server are available, so you would basically have to have some sort of clever logic on the OpenStreetMap server that finds the smallest polygon that completely uh, encloses the area that someone has requested, and it could be a little bit difficult from a user interface point of view because you would have to make people aware that um, okay you are now transferred to a different site and what you will be downloading is not exactly what you asked for because you drew this rectangle and we'll give you something else instead la 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 but um, yeah it, it, it could be done there's of course always the question whether from the official OpenStreetMap website do we really want to link uh, to third-party websites, and I mean the GeoFabric website is essentially a third-party website. There's no guarantee that it will be uh, that it will continue to exist in that way. You know, it's um, I mean it has been for the last couple of years, and I hope it will be for the next couple of years. But from an OpenStreetMap operating perspective, it's of course an external service that you cannot necessarily rely on. Again, <laughs> thank you. Yes. Um, uh, w the question was whether I had any suggestions uh, in terms of tuning uh, or the the uh, configuring the operating system for um, for making these things run fast. Um, I think it's it's essentially in what what. This thing, what the bottleneck is on the download server, is really uh, disk I/O. So, and in this case, it's streaming disk uh, disk I/O. So you can help uh, by by adding an SSD. But um, if you have fast streaming rotating disks, that's also that's also good. Um, the guy who runs extracts.bbbike.org has a machine with 64 gigabytes of RAM, and he says that because all of the planet file uh, is in RAM in in the disk cache. Um, it, it's actually quite fast for him to cons to create custom extracts from this planet file once it's in cache. So that's an option to just add a massive amount of RAM. Um, I think, yeah, well, the next speaker is in, in five minutes, so maybe one final question if someone has something. Very good. No final question. Thank you for attending. <laughs>